Brakatheya Hawa, Brakatheya Hawa Shai, Brakatheya Hawa, Brakatheya Hawa Shai, Brakatheya Hawa, Brakatheya Hawa Shai. Blessed be the true, holy, powerful, mighty name of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh. And blessed be the true, holy, powerful, mighty name of His only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai, our Lord and our Savior. The Thumash Nakabala, the Kumishra Sharala, get double honest to the elders of Israel, being the apostles. And the elders of Great Millstone that rule well. Salakia. Shalom, Wahab, Labach, Kershaw, Sharala, which is peace and love to the elect of Israel. Come back at y'all again with another lesson. Baharach, Chachorah, Shah, Amar, from the Holy Spirit of Truth. Not sure exactly what I'm going to title this video yet, but it's going in an article uh, on express.co.uk, News, World, Putin, Russia, and Ukraine, right? So this website, Express, uh, Nuclear Weapons, the title of the article is Nuclear Weapons Are Gift from God, Ready to Be Used on the West, claims Putin's mouthpiece. Professor Sergei Karganov believes the threshold for the use of nuclear weapons is unacceptably high. And this was published June 15th, 2023. Right? And the video I showed you was uh, Russia testing a certain missile system. So let's get into it. It says, nuclear missiles are a gift from God, which... Vladimir Putin must be ready to use against a bunch of targets if the West refuses to back down. A Kremlin hardliner and foreign policy expert has said in an inflammatory analyst showing you the mentality over there. Showing you the mentality over there with Gog and Magog with the Medes. They're being stirred up. All right. And it's Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai stirring them up. They're realizing this is this is the Lord's weapons, man. All right, the Lord has given this technology, this nuclear capability to us, and it's for what? To defend against the West, to bring the West down, to bring America and its allies down, to bring down this current power structure, this current system. Okay, let's start off with a precept. We'll start off in Isaiah, the 13th chapter. Isaiah, we'll probably just title this video, Nuclear Weapons Are a Gift from God. Isaiah 13 and 1, the burden of Babylon, which Isaiah, the son of Amos, did see. So Isaiah seen the downfall, the destruction, the different plagues and events that would take place upon Babylon, upon America in the last days. Right? Verse 2, it says, lift ye up a banner upon the high mountain. So the end of this place, the, 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 the beginning of the end of this place starts with this truth being lifted up. That's that banner upon the high mountain, the high mountain being America. It says in Jeremiah, or it might be Micah, oh, somewhere in the prophets it says that the Lord has raised up prophets in Babylon. Okay? Babylon being the high mountain, all right, or America being the high mountain. All right, and that banner is the uh, truth being spoken through the prophets. Okay, the prophecies being spoken through the prophets. All right, lift ye up a banner upon the high mountain. Exalt the voice onto them. Shake the hand that they may go into the gates of the nobles. I have commanded my sanctified ones. Sanctified ones is his elect, the ones that have this truth. It says sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Right? I have also called my mighty ones, the mighty ones is the angels, right? who's operating the so-called UFOs, so-called UAPs. I have also called my mighty ones for mine anger, even them that rejoice in my highness. The noise of a multitude in the mountains like as of a great people. A tumultuous noise of the kingdoms of nations gathered together. That's war, world War Three is soon to break loose. And before World War Three. Hits its peak, hits its height. The MOTB will be enforced and implemented. Okay, the dollar would have the before nuclear missiles can be shot. The dollar would have already collapsed and have no value. Before nuclear war takes place, the MOTB, the MARK, the Karagma, the digital all the, that grain of rice is going to be forced upon the whole world. He caused it all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond to receive an MARK in their right hand or, or in their forehead. And without that MARK, you're not going to be able to buy or sell. That's the chronological order of the end of this place. All right. The C hit first has to be enforced and then. 
Salakia. Um, Isaiah 13, lost my train of thought to deal with something. This Isaiah chapter 13 and verse uh, 4 again. It says, Salakia for that. I know I was in the in the mid-sentence, mid-thought. But anyways, it's Isaiah 13 and verse 4. It says, The noise of a multitude in the mountains, like as of a great people, a tumultuous noise of the kingdoms of nations gathered together. The Lord of hosts must of the host of the battle. So the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, he's in control of everything that's taking place, man. Okay, he's he's going to force these nations to go to war. Why? Because it's biblical prophecy. It has to take place. Okay, verse five, Isaiah 13 and five, it says they come from a far country from the end of heaven, even the Lord and the weapons of his indignation to destroy the whole land. So these are the Lord's weapons. OK, they come from a far country that's talking about intercontinental ballistic missiles. Why is it called intercontinental? Because it can go it can go from one continent to another continent, from one far country to another far country. All right. From the end of heaven. We even just seen the video how it shot into the heavens. Man, in Isaiah 34 it says the Lord's sword shall be bathed in heaven and it shall come down upon Idumia. So in the latter part of this verse where it says to destroy the whole land, the whole land is talking about Idumia, a.k.a. America, a.k.a. Babylon, a.k.a. Sodom and Gomorrah. All right. Matter of fact, let's jump down. This is the book of Isaiah chapter 13. In verse 16, their children shall be dashed to pieces before their eyes. Their houses shall be spoiled and their wives ravished. Behold, I will stir up the Medes. It says Babylon. Look, look at the title. Babylon will fall to the Medes. It's not talking about ancient Babylon, man. Okay. The way ancient Babylon fell is just conquered overnight. We can read about that. Okay. This is when we read this it's showing you a separation between ancient Babylon and in modern day Babylon, the virgin daughter of Babylon. Okay. Isaiah 13 and 17. Behold, I will stir up the Medes against them. Okay. What are they saying? That article is uh, inflammatory. What do you say? It's right. Inflammatory analysts. Right. These. Russia's the Russia the bear is being stirred up the Medes which the Medes is the Russians okay so when it says behold I will stir up the Medes against them it's saying I will stir up the Russians against America all right it says which shall not regard silver and as for gold they shall not delight in it and everybody's getting away from the dollar that's not that the dollar ain't shit no more Okay, verse 18, it says, Their bowls also shall dash the young men to pieces, and they shall have no pity on the fruit of the womb. Their eyes shall not spare children. It's going to be great death, man. And if you're not right with the Lord, you going to get left. Okay, if you're not right with Yahweh Ba'ashem Yahweh Shai, you about to get caught up in this judgment, man. Just like in the times of Noah, they was eating, they was drinking, they was giving in marriage. There was babies around. There was beautiful, fine women around. There was people that was famous and was well off and had a lot of money and was well known. They all drowned in the flood. Right? Only Noah in his house because what? Noah was right with Yahweh Ba'asham Yahweh Shai. Noah walked with the Lord. He moved in fear and faith and obedience to the Heavenly Father. Therefore, him and his house was delivered. Right. Verse 19, it says in Babylon, but ain't nobody worried about that. Ain't nobody worried about building the ark right now. OK, niggas is worried about other shit. Niggas is worried about having fun and generational wealth with the with the currency that's going completely down the drain. Niggas is worried about all the wrong things. And it's going to catch up. It's going to catch up very, very fast. We don't have much longer in this place. We can't be here much longer. It's too much wickedness going on. Your sins have reached to heavens, to the heavens. It says in Babylon, America, the, gl the glory of kingdoms, the beauty of the Chaldees' excellency shall be as when Yahweh overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. How did the Heavenly Father overthrow Sodom and Gomorrah? By fire and brimstone. Therefore, this Babylon that we're reading about is clearly not talking about ancient Babylon because ancient Babylon is still standing. It's still inhabited. Ancient Sodom and Gomorrah isn't inhabited. Can't nobody live there. Can't nobody stay there. But ancient Babylon is still inhabited today, known as uh, modern-day Iraq. Okay, so this is talking about 
a new Babylon. It's talking about the virgin daughter of Babylon. It's talking about America to be plain and simple. And this place is going to be overthrown just like Sodom and Gomorrah was overthrown. It's going to be torched by fire and brimstone via intercontinental ballistic whip missiles, the weapons of the Lord's indignation. Let's get something. Since we're in Isaiah. This is Isaiah chapter 54 and verse 16. Behold, I have created the smith that bloweth the coals in the fire. The Lord gave this technology to the scientists, the German scientists. You had uh, the Manhattan Project. Okay, uh, Operation Paperclip, where you had these German scientists, these German nuclear scientists, which is the smith that's being talked about. A smith, what, in the ancient days would create weapons, right? swords, spears, and axe, on and so forth. The modern day uh, smith is the scientist creating the nuclear weapons, right? The Lord put it in their spirit to make these nuclear we weapons. Why? So that, these, that, these, uh, that Esau can destroy himself. The same blessing he got is a curse. He that live by the sword shall die by the sword. <clears throat> this is Revelation chapter 6 and verse 4. It says, and there went out another horse that was red. This red horse is talking about the uh, so-called white man, all right, the Edomites and his power structure. Of course, it's symbolic for power. And this horse is red. Why? Again, because it's talking about the Edomites. All right. Genesis, the 25th chapter says the first came out red all over like a hairy garment. You shall call his name Esau. Later on, Esau's name was changed to Edom. Edom meaning red. OK, it says and power was given to him that sat there on to take peace from the earth. Since this devil came in the rulership, ain't been no type of peace. Right. America itself been in uh, involved in some type of war over 92 uh, uh, percent of the time has been in rulership, man. Right. It says and that they should kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword. They're going to kill one another with that great sword. OK, it was given. It was it says it was given unto him. That's what a gift is. Right. A gift is something that's given. Who's given him that great sword? Who blessed who blessed Esau? Who blessed Esau? It was his father Isaac, and we know that Isaac is uh, uh, came back as Yahweh Shai in the reincarnation. So Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai uh, uh, has gifted the has gifted the so called white men have gifted these Edomites, which the Russians are Edomites as well, has gifted the Edomites with this great sword, with this nuclear capability, and that's going to be the end of this society. Okay. That they should kill one another. Let's go back into that Isaiah 54 and 16. Behold, I have created, the Lord created, the smith that bloweth the coals in the fire, and that bringeth forth an instrument for his work, for the Lord's purpose, for his will. Right? So his determination is to gather the nations and to pour upon them his indignation. And I have created the waster to destroy. The Lord created the waste of the nuclear missiles. Why? To destroy America off the face of the earth and to bring down this wicked, vile society. I'm going to read the next verse. All right. This, this verse has been um, a defense for me, you know, lately. A heavy defense for me lately, right? Isaiah 54 and 17. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. All right, it says in the book of Revelations that the second death had no power over the remnant, roughly paraphrasing. The, the, the second death is the, talking about the nuclear war. It's talking about that nuclear fire. So them missiles ain't got no power over us, man. No effect on us. So nothing else, nothing else, no other obstacle, no other battle, no other weapon formed against us is going to be able to prosper. Right. And every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment, thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage. This is the heritage. The niggas call it hating. The Lord calls it standing up for righteousness. Right. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord Yahweh. So that's pretty much it on that. Let's go back to the article, see what else it says. A lot of shit froze up. 
It says, Professor Sergei Karganov also bizarrely claimed such strikes would save humanity. And that's true. And this, this guy, this Sergei guy, not lying, man. It said, also bizarrely claimed. It's not bizarre. Look at the path that this devil is taking. Look at his agenda. Look at what he's seeking to establish and to accomplish on this earth. No gender. Destruction of the uh, uh, the nuclear family. 15 minute cities. Virtual reality and all this other bullshit. Man, fake food. Eating insect, insects to survive. All this crazy ass. It says that the, uh, he, uh, the heathen imagined a vain thing. He will not be able to perform his enterprise, roughly paraphrasing. This devil has to be stopped. And he's going to be stopped by Yahweh Shai Mashiach and the angels and nuclear missiles. The combination of them both, man. All right, it, says, it, says, it says, by fire and by sword shall the Lord uh, plead with all flesh. And the slain of the Lord shall be many. Roughly paraphrasing Isaiah 66 and verse 15. Someone can post that. Professor Sergei. Karaganov also bizarrely claimed such strikes, talking about nuclear strikes, right, would save humanity and free the world from the five century long Western yoke. And the man's not lying, okay? Says that the days should be short and otherwise no flesh would be saved. Come on now. This is the book of Matthew chapter 24 and 22. And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. So the Lord, he's speeding everything up, man. World War III is closer than we believe, which means what? The implementation of the MOTB, the Karagma, is, is even closer. Again, because it has to take place before... Nuclear war happens. Let me prove that. This is the book of Revelation chapter 14 and verse 8. It says, And there followed another angel saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city, which made all, Bislaki, because she made all nations drink of the wine or the wrath of her fornication. And the third angel followed them saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image and receive his M-A-R-K in his forehead, or in his hand, showing you that the M-A-R-K would be enforced before what happens. Verse 10. The same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of Yahweh, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone. He's going to be tormented with nuclear missiles if he gets that M-A-R-K. Showing you that the M-A-R-K comes first. Then if you get that, one of the judgments is being tormented by fire and brimstone via intercontinental ballistic missiles. All right, which is the weapons of the Lord's indignation. He created the smith and the waster to destroy, to make the whole land desolate. And he's given it into the hand of this red horse, of in the hands of these devils, so that they can kill one another. Like that Revelation 6 said. Right, And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. That's the point on that. Oh, let's get another one. Uh, <sighs> Professor Sergei also bizarrely claimed such strikes would save humanity and free the world from the five century long western yoke. The western yoke. All right. Let's get this in Sirach 10. Sirach 10 just popped in my head. This is Sirach chapter 10. In verse 3 it says, An unwise king destroyeth his people. That's the western yoke. The west, the, the, this world is being ran by an unwise king. And what is he doing? He's destroying the people. He's destroying the earth. He's destroying the water. He's destroying the air. He's destroying everything. He's destroying all the ecosystems. Right? But through the prudence of them which are in authority, the city shall be inhabited. The power of the earth is in the hand of the Lord. And in due time, he will set over it one that is profitable. We come into that time. 
All right. Uh, the point, the main point I wanted to get is verse eight. It says, because of unrighteous dealings, injuries and riches, God by the sea, the kingdom is translated from one people to another. All right. Let's keep, let's keep going. All right. But the kingdom is being translated. We're in the midst of a changing uh, of, of the changing of rulership. Esau is the end of the world. Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. Why is earth and ashes proud? There is not a more wicked thing than a covetous man. For such an one setteth his own soul to sail. Because while he liveth, he casteth away his bowels. The physician cutteth off a long disease. That long disease being Esau Edom. That western yoke. The physician is going to cut it off. Right? It says, and he that is today a king, tomorrow shall die. So you're ruling right now, but pretty soon your ass going to be in chains. All right, serving out a long, long bid. Building, p being, paying for your sins, paying for what you have done. I should say, paying for what you have done to the uh, chosen people. Paying for what you have done to the apple of the Lord's eye. Paying for all the wickedness that you promoted on this earth. Right. So there's more. There's more, you know, I can bring out, but for time's sake, I'm gonna I'm gonna read one more. This is Isaiah chapter nine and verse six. It says. Uh, that's not it. Isaiah 9 and 5. For every battle of the warrior is with confused noise and garments rolled in blood. But this shall be with burning and fuel of fire. It's going to be a nuclear war. All right. That's what is, is, is going to take place very, very soon. After the MARK is enforced and implemented. Okay. And that's what we hear these... Um, Different nations talking about nuclear war, aim at the West, bringing this place down. I know what I wanted to read. This is Second Ezra chapter four and verse. Second Ezra chapter four and verse. 26 it says then enter he me and said the more thou searchest the more thou shalt marvel the for the world hasteth fast to pass away this place is on its way out man <sighs> it's like you and cannot comprehend the things that are promised to the righteous in time to come for this world is full of unrighteousness and infirmities but as concerning the things whereof thou askest me i will tell thee for the evil is sown, but the destruction thereof is not yet come. The evil is sown. How is the evil sown? Through the through the yoke of the West. Like that article put it. Or like Sergei, whatever his name put it. Right? That's why the world is, is, is in the state that it's in. Because of that Babylon juice being spread across the four corners of the earth. Okay, it says and cannot comprehend the things that are promised to the righteous in time to come. We coming into that time, man. We're getting those promises. The Lord is not slack concerning them promises. It says for this world is full of unrighteousness. This world is full of it. It, it didn't say this world got got a little bit of unrighteousness. It says it's full of it. It's completely encapsulated with unrighteousness and infirmities. And fire is gonna cure it, man. All right, fire is going to reset this place and put everything back to where it needs to be. Okay, it says, but as concerned, it's not uh, Russia's going down too, man. It's, Lord, it says, Lord said, I'm against Gog and Magog, right? Which is the Russians, uh, Ezekiel and Ezekiel. It says, but as concerning the things whereof thou askest me, I will tell thee, for the evil is sown, but the destruction thereof is not yet come. If therefore that which is sown be not turned upside down. This place got to get flipped over. It's going to get flipped over by miss by missiles, right? Millions of nuclear warheads torching this hoe. 
It says, and if the place where the evil was sown passed not away, then cannot it come? That is sown with good. This place got to be. O daughter of Babylon, who ought to be destroyed via what? Intercontinental ballistic missiles. Okay, that's how the world is going to be free from the yoke of the, uh, of the, the, free from the Western yoke. Free from the ways of this filthy, dirty ass devil. This, um, I think this is what I want. This is Revelation chapter 20 in verse 8. It says, And shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four. I'll start at 7. It says, And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison. So the thousand years right here in Revelation 27 is talking about the uh, dark ages, right? Which uh, lasted approximately a thousand years. When that came to an end, right? When Jake was, uh, the, uh, Jake was ruling during the dark ages, right? When that came to an end, that's when the Renaissance period uh, took place. Renaissance means rebirth. Rebirth of who? The Roman Empire. That's Satan being loosed out of his prison, right? Coming back in the rulership, that deadly wound being healed. That's what that verse 7 is talking about. Verse 8, and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four corners of the earth. Gog and Magog to gather them together to battle. So America and Russia is, is destined to go to battle. That's why we hear them constantly in the news uh, chatting shit, man. All right. Talking shit to each other. It says the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. And they went up on the breadth of the earth and could pass the camp of the saints about the beloved city and fire came down from Yahweh out of heaven and devoured them. It's the Lord. It's the Lord that's going to cause this, this, the, this war to take place. He must drift the whole of the battle. He's going to set shit off. It says in the book Ezekiel, he, sh he shall make them think of evil thought. The evil thought is what? Pushing that. Push the fucking button. All right. So young push, just push the goddamn button. Right, the Lord's gonna make them push that button, man. It says, it talks about he's gonna smite the arrow out their hand. He's gonna force their hand, okay? He's gonna force them to go to war that His will may be done, okay? So that's pretty much it, man. I'll leave it there. Lord willing, it was edifying, uplifting, exhorting. <sighs> so like, yeah, I'm gonna give all praises to Yahweh. Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Rakakwadash. Yahweh is the true, holy, powerful, mighty name of the Heavenly Father. Yahweh Shai is the true, holy, powerful, mighty name of His only begotten Son, our Lord and our Savior. Rakakwadash is the Holy Spirit that speaks through us, that allows us to rightly divide the word of truth and teach the word correctly and directly. The Thamash Nakabalaz, Akwim Shah, Sharala, Gedabahana, the elders of Israel, being the apostles and the elders of the great millstone, their rule well. Shalom, Wahabla, Bakhiar. Shaw Yasharala, which is peace and love to the elect of Israel. Shalom, my kingdom, brothers, keep on pushing. Stay sober, stay diligent, stay faithful, stay prayed up. Salvation draw off nigh, redemption is near them, we believe. Shalom.